Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about an anime cartoon, Avatar The Legend of Korra. I just did a podcast on Avatar The Last Airbender, which I love. I think it's close to a masterpiece as you might get these days in animation and cartoons and whatever genre you want to put it in. The Legend of Korra for me was a different story. I found myself having to go back to it. I watched it for a little while, and then I kind of faded off. Wasn't so interested, and then I made a commitment and watched it all. So, overall, without giving too many spoilers or plots away, although it's been out for a while, I think I would sum this up as, not for me, but... You know, I think there's a lot of good in it. You got the same creators coming back. Michael Dante DiMartino, Brian Konitzko. There was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, apparently, with this uh, continuation of Avatar. It seems that the first season was given a green light, and it was supposed to be wrapped up as a one-season arc. And in the middle of it, I think they got the go-ahead to do three more seasons. So this turns out to be four books instead of three, which is what Avatar The Last Airbender was. Now, also, because it's on Nickelodeon, there was some kind of weirdness where some episodes were only online streaming and not on Nickelodeon. Like, I don't under like, webisodes? I can't understand why you do something like that and i can i can also understand that even though i consider avatar the last airbender a masterpiece uh close to it what did nickelodeon think of it what do they have invested in these creators so is there some kind of behind the scenes stuff where it was like okay you know what we're only doing one oh what we'll give you this much money for do three more and they were okay let's make it seasonal arcs instead of like the last airbender which is subplots that carry on and continue, but it's one overall plot for three seasons. I think there's a little bit of um, that displacement that bothers me, and I'm not saying that it objectively is bad, although there is a lot of shit that I don't agree with and I think is bad, but I don't think it ruins the show for people who like it. So it's one of those, I can see the elements that people love, there were some great moments in it, some uh, great uh, filming techniques. Sometimes the animation looked spot on great. Sometimes it looked like it was lacking. So maybe there's a someone switched over the anima animation teams in that way. And although I could see, I could understand someone loving steampunk and machines and steam machines and the progress of what was hinted at in Avatar The Last Airbender. I'll grant it that. It didn't sit well with me. And some of the music cues didn't work right. So overall, I think I could see people liking it. It's just not for me in that sense. When you get into it by season, I could say I kind of like what, what they were trying to do with season one, although it was a struggle for me. But something about how the characters were, how they seemed to repeat and not grow in certain ways, or it seemed odd... And it just didn't sit well. And when I went through the second season, I was like, what, you know, what are they trying to do? I didn't like these um, things they set up. And then they started using ancillary characters in bad ways, in my opinion. I, it just didn't sit well with me. Now, going back to what I said in the beginning, when you got greenlit for one season and that's your idea so let's make believe season one is the only thing that happened i might be able to judge it better and say okay this is what they went for oh you know what i'm not into steampunk too much but it was awesome i think they hurt themselves by doing the force books and it seems that it's got a i don't know it's got a disconnected feel even though they tried to do the uh set up the season ender the beginning of the next season books let's call it i you know it just a lot to pick out i used to 
to me, I would maybe give it a five, but I could see where people give it a seven and would like it. Like, you can't give this close to a ten like I would get Avatar The Last Airbender. It just doesn't work for me on a lot of levels. People will say, you know, season three, you know, I, there was something about season three I liked, but it had nothing really to do with the depth of the characters or the abilities that they were pulling off. So there's so many layers to what happened. On top of, it was supposed to be one season, one book, and now it's four books, and then it's aired, and it's sometimes it's not on Nickelodeon, it's on a sub-channel. What's going on with the creators? Is there hard into it? That type thing is permeates the show. And this is before I looked into it, because I'll be honest, I did not do a deep dive before. Only after. So what well, part of my routine will be, okay, I'll watch something, uh... Maybe watch it again, open up Notepad, write some notes, and then go look at maybe some reviews, look at the people I trust, and the, even the ones I don't like because they have opinions that differ from me, and kind of see what was the middle ground here and how it correlates to my own feelings at first and after, you know, looking at some content. I didn't do a big deep dive, and all I remember is my friend telling me, oh, you're watching Linda, because we had watched Airbender religiously, weekly, Got the DVDs, all the behind the scenes stuff. Loved it all. And I was like, oh, yeah, oh, it was, it's out. And I just watched like the first couple of episodes. I found myself not drawn back to it again. I wasn't really looking forward to continue. I wasn't excited for each, each episode. But, you know, things are going on. Who knows what, you know, frame of mind you're in and things that are impacting you. But I always knew something was going to finish and be determined to because just, you know, you love the uh, product or the franchise in that way, how good Aang and all the characters were. So you hope these things will develop. And getting through the first season, I was like, okay, I could see where they were going. And fine, hey, you know what? It just might not be where I would have went. It's not my cup of tea, so to speak. But for all the complaining behind the scenes, I really liked Korra. I liked some of the other characters here and there. Although that guy steals the show almost, the inventor guy. He's like a villain, and then he turns into a uh, you know, semi-good guy, I guess. There's a lot of characters they try to throw in, and it kind of does mimic the, um, the, the style that Avatar The Last Airbender did with their sub-characters. But I think it falls short here. I think it really becomes... Um, repetitive in some sense, although I think you can excuse some of that for the situations they put him in, right? I mean, you know, you want to see a character act a certain way at a certain point, and then it happens four episodes later, or it, you know, maybe this jarring of doing seasonal arcs where it's not like Ang has to learn how to. Uh, airbend all the elements by the time third season comes and he takes on the fire um bender uh mean you know fucking villain this one it's like okay so the first villain season villain is this second is this and then they did try to put in a character that would eventually become something but then by the fourth book i'm really not into it i I don't want to see certain things that they put on the screen i wasn't interested in some of the mech stuff in the beginning, although it kind of blended in with, I, you know, I kind of liked the 20s New York feel they were going for, in a sense. But here we got full giant mech suits, cannon and blast, energy weapons. And where Avatar The Last Airbender, its spiritual side was fascinating to me and not overused, this becomes saturated with ridiculous themes like, it's well, maybe not themes is the wrong word, but uh, contrived instances where things are going on, and then one of the fucking children of Ang or grandchildren is like a, a gifted in a certain way that'll help the story. And these little things just didn't work for me. I didn't find it intriguing or endearing. Although I loved, um, you know, some of the portrayals, like uh, Ang's son. There's a lot to like here and there with uh, the, the siblings. The family element at times seems to distract rather than add. It, it's, it's an odd thing where... And sometimes the element worked. 
and it's like maybe it's a it's just a mixed bag. I think that's how you know comes like there's such a it's such a mixed mixed bag. But I know if I really put my mind to it, I could just start picking out a lot of bad things about it. And that kind of leads me to, you know, maybe a missed opportunity. And although I do see the the uh, love for some of the arcs and the characters fine, I just it didn't come together to me. It just didn't feel like it wrapped up in each season, and I felt like I was really becoming attached. It started to be, I don't know, just a little, I don't know, not as entertaining. It was almost a, not, uh, maybe a chore in that sense where I'm like, oh, there's another book or, you know, what am I, how am I going to wait to see how many times she's defeated before she can all of a sudden do something and. It didn't really feel like a learning experience and growth. And they had opportunities like there's some really interesting moments in the show. And I I think they just missed their shot. And whether it's due to behind the scenes stuff, this is the product that's out there. So I don't really agree with the total critical acclaim that it might get if it gets it in that sense. But I, I could just see the people's love for Avatar Last Airbender, you know, it will carry you through. It's not bad in that sense. You know, the more I think about it, I I look at something like this and think, if I was writing it, that's where, like, it starts to go wrong with me. And I think that's maybe an element that um does become a factor for me. That I was, that I'll look at it and go, not only is this a flaw, objectively, but you compounded the mistake and went in a totally different direction. Like, I would have course corrected here and there. I don't do that too much for the most part. But um, when you love something like Avatar The Last Airbender, you fancy yourself somewhat of a writer in that sense. I think it is something you know, I have to be honest about. So, there is a love for the show. I did look enough into it about that. I don't know about the critical acclaim. Like, uh, you know, like, let's say, well, I could look real quick, but the awards and the music i really wasn't too into there was a little bit of a disconnect there um yeah this is a mixed bag for me it's just got a lot of great things a lot of i thought crappy things and it's not the close to master now it doesn't ruin it for me at all i don't look back and i try not to do that with any kind of content music videos uh, movies tv shows i try not to let the current iteration ruin what had been done in the past like bring up like metallica or all of a sudden they change their music okay maybe it's not for me but you know now would i lend the argument that you know you, you could ruin the franchise like i might do a podcast on it but it breaks my heart the uh, shannara chronicles I think the uh, world of Shannara that Terry Brooks created in novels is the best, if not one of the best, um, fantasy stories up there with Tolkien and Wheel of Time and things like that, in my opinion. Uh, It's just so hard when you're so close to the original. But you can ruin it. Like the TV show that they created for Shannara was a disaster, in my opinion. It just didn't work. And I don't know if that's agreed upon with the, you know, the creator says, yeah, just go ahead do what you got, do what you want to do with my, my work. And, you know, he's old and he just, but these guys seem young and seem like they were really passionate and it feels missing in this show. You know, talking about spirit, right? Uh, it just, I don't know. I did get a couple of things behind the scenes. Maybe I should have done more, but I even get the feeling that. There's a disconnect between the creators, like, um, the movie really fucked things up. M. Night Shyamalan might have really fucked things up. Uh, you know, thinking back about it, like, and by the way, this is a Green Lantern movie for me, because I'll watch Avatar The Last Airbender, a live-action movie, and not be angry and give, like, I might be somewhat entertained here and there, although it's fucking bad. It's, you can really dissect that movie and tear it apart. But, you know, that part of me that loves the airbender and says, okay, well, at least they made it. But can that ruin it? Like, does that give the chance for the next iteration to be 
fucked up. I don't know. It's just, you get this vibe from them when you see the, uh, some of the, um, what do you call it? Like, uh, Comic-Con panels and stuff and some interviews and it's weird. You can tell there's a weird thing going on between them and, uh, what they were doing with their, you know, their, their love, their, I mean, I don't know these guys too well, but I know they created near masterpiece with Avatar The Last Airbender. I don't know them enough to know that, like, they write novels or they got comic books and this is just a side thing. I mean, what happened? What happened with the connection between the studio, them, their vision? And then let's not even get into the whole LGBTQ bullshit nonsense that went on. I don't bother with a lot of that stuff with these shows, but if you're going to do it, do it well. They didn't do it well. This seems like pandering. I think most people would be insulted, but what do I know? Uh, it's not my uh, community, so to speak, but I find that all to be trite garbage. There's not much there. It seems shoehorned in like uh, another show that was accused of it. What show did that? What did I watch recently? It, it might have been uh, Voltron, I think, like at the end. But anyway... Subtlety is key sometimes, and sometimes going overboard is the right thing to do. But when you don't know what the fuck's going on, there's no connections here, the chemistry's not working in, in any different direction, and all of a sudden you want to say, boom, you know, this happened. Fine, okay, look, people love it. People want to, what do they call it these days? Shipping, whatever the fuck. Anyway, The Legend of Korra. Mixed bag. I'm going to say right in the middle for me. It kind of disappoints me in certain aspects, like things they did. Like, I don't like to give away, but they did a major thing. And it just didn't feel right at the time. The connection was never remade in a sense. It, you know, it kind of loses its impact. I can see where people are going to love it. There's a really fun uh, go get em attitude from this avatar. It's so different from Aang, and I think it was smart. I love when she, a lot of people use a clip like, and they use it as a negative, like she bursts through the wall when she's a kid, it's like, I'm the Avatar, and you gotta deal with it, I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go, <laughs> give me this fucking, uh, and I didn't care about that, it's, you know, whatever, but I think when you lay it out, no matter what happened with the background, I think it's so poor compared to Avatar, or let's say and mediocre in the sense of it, what it tried to do. It has some great elements. I don't, you know, I'm not really baffled by why people love it. And I guess that's where I stand on it. Everybody knows what to do. I hope you're doing well. Be safe out there. My best to you and yours.